torque problems, and uh, I'm going to talk you through them. Um, I'm pretty sure all the answers are right, but uh, certainly the theory is the more important piece. Um, okay, so this is our hanging box question. So there's a box hanging here. Um, this thick part is the board. There's the wire. This is like the wall, and the board is like hinged to the wall. Okay, so I give you the mass of the board, the mass of the box, the length of the board. Uh, I tell you that the wire is hooked here on the board at three-fourths of its length. And I give you the angle that the string makes with the board. Okay, I would like you to find the tension in the string and the horizontal and vertical components of this hinge force. Okay, so first thing we always want to do is we want to identify the forces acting on this system. So I have H. Y, I think, is going to be up. HX is to the right. The weight of the board is down, at, uh, and it's coming from the center of the board. We have the tension going up and left, and then we have the weight of the box going down. Okay, so let's look at forces. Here's X hat. X hat is going to be the right forces minus the left forces. So we just have the hinge force versus T cosine theta. Then we have the Y forces, which are the ups, T sine theta, and HY minus the two downs, the weight of the board and the weight of the box. Okay, so can't do anything with those yet because we have three variables and two equations. So we come over and we have to write a torque equation. I'm going to make the pivot right there where the hinge is, and based on that, then I have three different things causing torques. Remember, HY and HX will not cause a torque based on my pivot because torques are forces times the lever arm times the sine of the angle between them. And since HY and HX don't have a lever arm because they're acting at that hinge, they won't be in my torque equation. Um, typically, um, counterclockwise torques are positive and clockwise torques are negative. So if you look at the two weights, the weight of the board and the weight of the box, both would want to make this system rotate down, meaning um, on this picture, clockwise. So I made them both negative. So I just take the force times the lever arm times the sine of the angle between them. Now in these two weight cases, the, the angle is just sine of 90, so I didn't actually even write it. So the torque of the box is just, um, it's negative, uh, M2GL, and then the torque of the board is M1GL over 2, L over 2 being the lever arm because that's where the weight of the board is concentrated. And then we have the, the torque due to the tension in the string. So it's the tension in the string times the lever arm, that's how far it is away, times the sine of the angle between them. And then I just type that out and I get the tension in the string. And then once I know the tension in the string, I can come up here and find the horizontal, horizontal hinge force. And then I can find the vertical uh, hinge force. And the, the weird one about this one, this particular setup, is just a little interesting that I, where I have the wire hooked and the weight of the boxes that I selected, it ends up that HY ended up being a negative. Well, what does that mean? Well, all it means is that I actually picked the wrong direction for HY. I assumed HY was up, and it turns out, since it became a negative, that HY must be actually down. Meaning, you're pulling so hard on the, on the tension of the rope that the hinge actually pushes down on the board, so it, it prevents it from actually going upward. Okay, so the tension's got to be so big to make it so it won't rotate that it actually does cause the hinge force to be down, which is no big deal. Okay, now we have the firefighter and the ladder question. Okay, so we draw the, again, we, we know that M is the, is the mass of the ladder, uh, M2 is the mass of the firefighter, L is the length of the ladder, and D is how far he's climbed up the ladder, meaning the firefighter. So the firefighter's like right here, the weight of the ladder centered in the middle of the ladder, of course. Uh, I give you all these values, and I want to find the critical angle, meaning how small can the angle get before this whole system just crashes, meaning the ladder starts to slip on the ground, and then they would, they would all just crash. So I do the same thing I always do. I'm going to identify all the forces on the system. I have N1, which is the normal force on the ground. I have friction pointing to the right uh, between the ladder and the ground. I have N2, which is pushing left on the top of the ladder. There's no friction on the wall, so we don't have to worry about that up there. And then we have the two weights. Okay, just go through the same thing. X hat, FF minus N2 equals zero. Right minus left equals zero. And then Y hat, N1 minus M1G minus M2G is just the normal force of the ground versus the weight of the firefighter. 
and ladder equals zero. And then I can do some algebra here. Uh, the bottom equation tells me that N1 has to equal the two weights. But we know the definition of the force of friction equals mu times N. So the force of friction equals mu times N1, which means this is true. But then N2 equals FF based on that equation. So we actually know that the force, that, that N2 has to equal mu M1G plus M2G. Okay, that's going to come into effect later. Now we do the torque equation. Um, the torque equation is, I'm going to put the pivot right there. And so then I have the torque of N2 versus the torques due to the weights. Again, N1 and FF don't cause a torque because they act at the pivot. Torque is always the force times the lever arm times the sine of the angle between them. If this little guy is theta, then that angle up there between N2 and L is also theta. So the torque due to N2 is just N2 L sine theta. Uh, now we have to figure out the, the torques due to the two weights. So it's M1G, that's the fire, uh, that's the, the ladder, times L over 2, times sine of the angle between them. And I'm going to say this is some alpha, okay? That's the angle between the force and the ladder. And then I have the firefighter, which is just its force, M2G, times the distance, D, it's up the ladder, times sine of alpha. Now down here, this is what we're looking at. If that's theta, that's alpha, and as a reminder, sine of alpha is the same thing as cosine of theta. So those are the same. So up here, instead of sine alpha, I'm going to replace it by cosine of theta. Okay? The rest of it is just algebra. Once you get to this point here, we're kind of done uh, with all the physics, and all we're left with is math. So all this stuff right here is just a big number. So it's just, I, I typed all of this out and made it into a number. I moved these two things to the other side of the equation and typed all that stuff out and got a number. Uh, I divided both sides by the 31, 36. I divided by cosine to get tangent, and then I did inverse tangent to find the angle. That is the critical angle. Any smaller than that, and the ladder will slip away. Okay, and then once you know theta, you can find everything else if you wanted to. Okay, so there, there's, your, there's your typical ladder question. All right, here's the hanging shark question. Okay, so th this is the shark hanging from a string that's being propped up by some board. The board makes an angle theta with the ground. The board is also supported by a rope that's tied even further back. Um, otherwise, the whole thing would just rotate down and the shark would hit the ground. I give you the mass of the board, the mass of the shark, the angle that the board makes with the ground, the angle with the rope makes with the ground, and the length of the board. Um, however, the length of the board is, is going to end up being irrelevant. So if I don't give you this, don't flip out because it's actually all going to cancel. You, I, I, I won't use it at all in there. Okay, so we do the same thing, forces. So we have HY, HX on the hinge, weight of the board, weight of the shark, and the tension in the string. Okay, so pivot is right here. That makes sense. Thus, HY and HX won't be in our torque equation. And then we have this guy. There's our torque equation. So think this through. Torques are always forces times lever arms times sine of the angle between them. Um, you have to think about the, the torque that this tension causes. This tension is going to make the, the board want to rotate counterclockwise. Right? This guy up here is pulling that thing and making it rotate to the left. All right, so then I know that the torque is the force times the lever arm L times that little angle right there. That angle, again, think about the geometry of it, that angle will end up being theta minus alpha. So this angle here, the angle between the rope and the board, is sine of theta minus alpha. So in this particular case, it's 15 degrees. Then I need to do the torques due to both the weight of the board and the weight of the box. The weight of the, what, the board, the board, so M1G L over 2, it's the lever arm, because the weight of the board is coming from the center, times sine of, well, the angle between that force and the lever arm, which is this little angle there. And that angle is, well, call it whatever, but it's 90 minus theta. 90 minus theta. Uh, and then I have to do the same angle, 90 minus theta, with the shark's weight and its lever arm. So the shark's weight is M2G, its lever arm is all of L, and then sine of 90 minus theta. Just remember, sine of 90 minus theta, uh, we can just do because we know theta. But it also is the same thing as cosine uh, of theta, if you really needed to do that. So notice the L's cancel. So gone L, gone L, gone L, and then we're left with this, which is just numbers. 
and then we can find the tension. And once we know the tension, we can come up here and find HX and come in here and find HY. Now, if they wanted to go one step further and they actually asked you for the normal force on the hinge, well, the normal force of that hinge is pointing, as we just decided, it's pointing up and to the right. So if you actually wanted to find the normal force, meaning the magnitude of that hinge force, we just have to come down here and do Pythagorean theorem with HY and HX, which we know. Okay. All right, last one is some sort of tipping question. So I got this board, I got some fulcrums on this thing, and I got a person, and this person is a la di da he's walking to the right. Well, at some point, he's going to get far enough to the right on this board that it's going to make it tip. And the question might be, how far can he walk before the system tips? Okay, so number one, right before the board tips, we know that N1 will be equal zero. N1 is going to equal zero right, right as the, that tipping point is going to hit. Um, our torque equation is going to be written such that we're looking at the pivot on N2. Why do we put the, put the pivot on M2? Because I don't know N2, and I don't want N2 to be in the torque equation. So if the pivot is there, N2 won't cause a torque. N1 is equal to zero when, it, when it's getting ready to tip. And so it's really easy. All you're saying is right when it gets ready to tip, the torque of the person making this thing go down that way, uh, that would be uh, clockwise, has to equal the torque of the board's weight making it go this direction, which would be counterclockwise. So all I'm saying is that the torque of the dude, actually the torque of the board, must equal the torque of the dude. And when those things are equal, uh, anything bigger than that, then it's going to tip. And you just have to be able to find those numbers. X would be how far the person is from the pivot, and D is how far the center of mass is from the pivot to the left. So based on the geometry in the story, just do a little subtraction or adding or whatever and figure out what X is or what D is. And I guess in this story, you'd have to figure out what D was, and then you could use this equation to find X. Um, if you wanted to know what N2 was right when it tipped, well, you know that's true. N2 right when it tips has to equal, the, the ups have to equal the downs because we know N1 is equal to zero. So N2, meaning this fulcrum, is completely supporting the weight of the board and the weight of the person. Okay, obviously there are variations to these four, but these four are probably the most popular question. The, the balancing tipping question, the shark question, which has a rope attached somewhere. The rope can actually be attached to the ceiling. It doesn't have to be attached to the ground, but it's really the same thing. Take your time. Uh, the latter question we can ask, it doesn't have to be finding theta. I could have given you theta and asked for how big does mu have to be to make this thing stable or how high can the firefighter climb such that it doesn't slip. And then certainly the, the bear walking out here trying to find the, the goodies or the hanging box question or the sign question are all kind of the same thing. So hopefully these four questions kind of sum up um, what we've done on Torque.